Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you saw my recent video, I reviewed this launch OBD2 scanner on my iS300 and it got a lot of reaction and you guys love this thing when you tried it out yourself. So on today's video, we're gonna be going over this launch X341 OBD2 scanner with custom software specifically for Lexus and Toyota vehicles. So you go into all the different menus and do all the diagnostics. So on today's video, we'll go over all the features specific to the Lexus IS250 here this is for the 2IS, which is from 2006 all the way up to 13, so stay tuned. So if you didn't check out that review video yet, uh, go ahead and check out that video on the link up here. So on that video, I did an introductory review to this thing with all the different features and all that. What it basically is, is a copy of TechStream, or at least it has a software and all the features of what you'll find on the OEM software used by the technicians at the dealership. But we get it in this easy, to hold handheld package and it just plugs up and it's powered by the actual car so you don't have to lug a laptop or anything around. Pretty much this thing is plug and play. It gets you through all the menus once you do all the updates when you get it. If you need the exact same one, check out the links down in the description for it for Amazon. It's about $140. Sometimes I have it on sale for like as low as like 119 I think when I first uh, did that video, but I think it's back up now. But you go ahead and just check out the link and see what the price is right now. But overall, the features of it are pretty user friendly. They basically just have all the different menus and all the different diagnostics that you would find in the OEM software, including all the customization stuff. So on today's video, we'll go over things like programming your TPMS, going through all the key menus, and just doing all the custom things that are available for the 2IS. So as you see here, we're scrolling through this PDF, and if you need to see this exact same PDF, go ahead and check out the links down in the description to the link to it for Club Lexus. But this thing basically has all the different settings that you can change some of these are like customized settings that you can do for your own personal things and other settings are just like the basic functionalities of all the stuff like the HVAC things the lighting different triggers or different set points for everything if you want to check out the full seven page looks check out this whole PDF on the link down below first thing we want to do is go ahead and just plug this baby up to the OBD port the OBD port has got a cover on it and is right here above the brake pedal so just go ahead and just plug it into the correct way and then we're gonna go ahead and just you probably don't need to start the car up to do what we're gonna do I'm just gonna turn it on without starting the car up so right now we turn the car on and let this thing boot up so it's basically on right now so we just want to go into diagnostics and then we're gonna go Lexus just let it load so it's gonna connect and load. Once it gets to here, then you can see all the different menus that we're gonna find in here. So this is gonna be a 16 pen for North America. So once you go through, then you gotta select which model you have. So I've got the one without radar crew, so I hit other, two wheel drive, and then you hit okay. Then it pulls up all your information. So right here, once we get into here, we can run a health report. We could see all the service functions, the custom and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just run a health report just to see how everything is doing. So overall, this health report is going to take a while to download. It took a two or three minutes for us to go, but you can see pretty much everything checks out on this car. Not really much. And then you could actually go here and look at the report and then it'll give you all the different information that you can see here. So the next thing we'll do, we'll just go ahead and go into the custom settings and see what we can do here. So you just kind of let this thing load and then we'll go into the menus after it loads up. So inside here we have all the different menu settings, the wireless door lock, security, windows, wipers, illuminated entry, light sliding sunroof air conditioning so if you went and downloaded that seven page list of everything it'll pretty much go through everything that's included in here and more in that list and it'll kind of explain to you what the default setting is what the content means and what you can change on there so one of the main things that you guys are going to use this for is probably going to be the light control which is trying to change the DRL setting. So we'll go in here and just show you how to easily do this. 
So once we go in here, you'll see right here it says DRL function. All you have to do is click into there. Right now, mine are turned off. So you just go ahead and just hit that button, set it, and turn it back on if you want. Once you do that, the DRLs are turned back on and then your headlights are probably going to be flickering when the car is on. So right there, you can see them. They flicker all the lights when the DRLs aren't shut off. So we'll go ahead and disable it. It's off right now. You see no more flashing on the walls. and they are off. So right here we see the light control function, light off delay, that's just the delay of when it turns off your lights after you get out of the car and walk away. So the one right under that is the sensitivity and that's how dark or how bright you want it to be. You want your automatic headlights to come on and then next one is gonna be display X off, the brightness on the display and then you can just see everything is pretty much matches what's on this list. So right now some of the other things we're going to test is go to system selection. We're going to look at the powertrain, the engine control module. Since the engine is on, we're going to read this and then we can actually look at like things like read the data stream. Go back. We can special functions. And then we can look at the air fuel O2. We have a banked engine. We can see all the different reports from the various banks, the engine speed. So it's just watching everything right now on here. And you can actually record this information. You can look at the report and email the report to yourself. So one of the things, if you guys didn't know, on the IS250, they don't give you the option of doing auto, recirculate, or fresh air right here. On the 350s and the ISF, you actually have a middle button, which is auto. So on the 250s, you can actually set it in the custom settings, air inlet mode. You can actually set it to manual. And what happens with manual is whatever you set it on, whether it's recirculate or fresh air, it won't change from what you set it. The default mode on here is auto, so it'll automatically switch between fresh air and recirculate air. Uh, down here in Florida, it's so humid and hot all the time, I always try to recirculate whenever I'm out. In other climate zones, people like it to bring in fresh air whenever it changes, and whenever it's too hot, it brings in recirculate air, but I don't like that down here in Florida. So for me, I set it on manual most of the time. A few other things on here, you could actually have a temperature shift, so you could offset your temperatures from what is reading you could go up and down right here degree C you can also do the defrost mode which is linked to the inlet air so as you're in these menus if your car didn't come with a lot of different options like mine a lot of these things don't even work like even the seat right here this is mostly for the automatic and memory seats I don't have anything so if I click on that it doesn't have any kind of setting uh, compass calibration, I don't believe my compass is attached to this. So you can see there's no customizable data there. Unit conversion, I'm not even sure what this is. This must be between like Celsius and Fahrenheit, which, yeah, you can set it by the region that you're in. So here's a menu, smart key. So we got wait time, ignition available area, and trunk mode. Settings for three seconds, one, two, or five and a half seconds there for the park wait time. Ignition available area is also something. If you have your key in the trunk or if you have your key somewhere else, you can't start it. You have to be in the front of the car according to the definitions and everything right here. The next thing we're looking at here is the door lock and unlock options. So this is like when you actually take your car in and out of park where your locks go automatically or not, right? You can actually set it for like the manual mode where the locks unlock after you turn off the car within like a certain number of seconds and you pull your handle or unlock all your doors. For my car, I actually took it out of the auto park way to unlock and lock it and I use the speed. I also have it set where I just manually open it. So if I sit in the car for a little bit and I pull this handle, it only opens my door. But if I do it immediately after I turn off the car, it'll open all the doors. 
and this is actually one of the settings I believe you could just set using your owner's manual following custom directions without TechStream or this thing but this thing makes it easier to set so the next setting we're going to look at is wiper settings so if you look at here on the, the first two the speed wipe and the auto wipe is not available or available so this thing depends on what option you have the last one is the rewipe control this is the one that i had originally i turned it off because it's kind of annoying what happens is when you clean your windows wiper fluid it waits like three seconds and then it rewipes it again if you didn't notice that on your car. I initially turned that off when I first got the car because I didn't want to leave the streaks. But after a while, I found it to be useful, so I actually turned it back on. So next thing we look at is the various wireless lock and unlock settings, as you can see here. And then when we cross-reference it, all the different options that you can do here with your different wireless operations. You could turn the beep on and off. You could turn the trunk opening and close and how long it takes to do that and various other things. So yeah, definitely a lot of little things here and there that you can set to your preference in here. So the rest of these functions are just other ways to unlock and lock the door using the key and the actual hole, which no one really does. The same with the unlock twice button if you actually stick the key in the hole, but again, we don't really use that here. The auto lock button is if you accidentally unlock your car or lock it, it actually relocks the car if you don't open it within a certain amount of time. So here's some more functions. If you've ever come out to your car and had your windows all down and your sunroof open, these are the settings right here. It's under wireless for the key fob. So you could actually open all your windows and doors if you hold the unlock button on your wireless remote. The other two functions on here are when you stick your key in the side of the door, you can actually roll up and roll down your windows automatically right here. So these things are pretty much set from the factory like that and you could turn these on and off if you don't want these features. So next we'll look at the sunroof options right here. Again, as I explained earlier about the automatic opening and closing for the keys or the wireless remote, you could actually set it to turn on and off to be interconnected with the key or the remote. And then you can also tell it if you want it to slide or do you want it to tilt. So right now for wireless opening, I just want it to tilt and then for the key operator opening I want it to slide. The key operator one is probably one I'll never use since you have to take that cap off to actually use the key on this car. So the next thing I'm looking at is the passive security or the security function and then here you can see the various settings you have. So you have the passive mode where it basically automatically puts the car into security mode when you walk away whether you lock the door or not. I turn this off because I have my car in the garage all the time and I don't want this thing to arm and I open the car and it starts honking the horn and going all crazy so I actually turn that off. The horn is on so that's when the horn beeps so you could turn that on where it doesn't make any sound and then the delayed entry so this is what happens if your car happens to be in security mode or passive mode and you get in here you have 14 seconds to start the car and turn it on or else it's just going to go crazy so the next thing we're looking at is the illuminated entry. So as you can see, the illuminated entry has got quite a few options right here. Again, this is just the controlling the exterior lights on and off and various other settings in there you can see on the list. So for the next setting we're gonna play with, we're gonna play with the TPMS. So you go under the chassis electronics right here, TPMS, and you can actually go to the special functions right here and you can register your codes right here. So the registration codes right here, I'm actually gonna go through an example. I actually have two settings on here right now for my car, and I'm gonna go ahead and swap them around just for this example. I have my rims or my wheels, my big wheels on the main set, and then I have my factory wheels on the second set. So I swap them back around like they came from the factory like that. One other thing with registering TPMS IDs, you can hit the little I right here and it'll actually pull up instructions for you to do everything online. So that's a pretty good resource there. So I'm gonna go into the main set and then it's gonna begin the whole process, right? So we'll go hit OK. Hit OK. It's gonna communicate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write ID for the ID one. I'm gonna input so I need to get the codes off my 
new sensors. So those sensors, each one of your new sensors has come with a seven digit hex code and you enter, input them here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just input my second set right now, which is gonna be E. When you got these sensors, they have a bunch of different codes on them. Usually the hex codes are zero through nine and then A through F. Once we get that done, we're gonna hit OK. And it's gonna write this thing to the ECU. So to check if it programmed correctly, you can actually read the data stream. And we're gonna actually pull the codes off the ECU that it has and we can see the main set or the second set on here. So once you go in that menu, there's all the different things you can read right here. You actually select all and it'll actually pull up everything that you can read and it'll pull it all up and you can just scroll through it and see all the data that's stored. So there's four pages to this. So I found it under the data stream. So you wanna look at your registered ID codes right here, it's kind of hidden. And you just hit all four or five of them that you wanna see. Go ahead and hit okay. The number five is for usually for the spare tire if you have a full size spare. Since we don't have that, we don't use it. So since I overwrote my main set with my original OEM wheels, I'm about to write the second set with my rims or my 20s on here. So I could go ahead and do this thing all over again. So if you guys didn't know how to switch your TPMS, you basically go over here and you just scroll across until you actually see the menu right there. And then you can actually go main set and then second set right there. And once you do that, you're pretty good. You're gonna have it set to the second set. So one of the things on the data stream for the TPMS that I found is that you can't read the registered sensors for the second set no matter what because for some reason it's not listed in any of these menus you only read the registered ids for the first main set even though you can see the main tire and the second tire on the menu you can see that they have four programmed to them but you can't see what's read in there one of the things you could do is select all of them create the report and just email it to yourself and you can see everything that's in here easier. The one wonky thing about all these reports, if it's a four pager like this one down here, you actually have to export each view or each page, which is kind of stupid. So next I'm gonna go into the ABS menu, just see what we can do in here. So you can actually do an actuator test, solenoid, motor, ABS light, all the different solenoids. So next we're going into the service function just to see what we can see in this screen. So in here you can see the service light reset, angle sensor reset, ABS bleeding, tire pressure reset. I wonder what this is, registration. So this just goes back into the registration ID for the TPMS like we did from the other menu. Injector coding, adaptive gearbox, seat calibration, zero calibration on your seats. I guess if you have automatic or memory seats, you could do a zero calibration. AC learning, servo motors. So I don't wanna mess with any of this stuff. The one thing I wanted to go over was the mobilizer and key programming. So it looks like you have all the options right here to register your ECU and IDs. Let me see what we have in here. Welcome to the ECU. So this is like a flashing of the ECU. Yeah, we don't wanna. So it's ID, steering, and remote engine starter. So I haven't messed with any of this stuff before. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of this stuff before I mess up something. But as far as programming a new key that you get, you have the classic way 
or the regular one in here. And it walks you through all the steps right here. You have to actually go through all those steps. So right now, if you go back, you saw there was three keys that are programmed to my car already. And then the classic way. So you get register keys, register keys with a new smart ECU and replacing all that stuff. So a lot of this stuff you can't really do without having the seed codes. So another thing, if you don't want to do all the special things, this thing does also have just a general diagnostic. So in order to get in there, you just got to exit the diagnostics and just go into OBD2. And then the, I would just go ahead and just load all the general OBD2 data on here, which is just reading check engine lights and all of that. MIL is malfunction indicator light. DTCs are diagnostic trouble codes, and then the rest of these are just everything in there. So you wanna, you can scan all protocols and just to see what's in here. Pretty much, I think we're pretty much just the ISO CAN bus. Everything else is like the J1850, and all these are different protocols around the world. In addition to scanning Toyota vehicles, as you can see under the mall setting, you can actually buy additional software for other vehicles if you work on more than just Toyotas and Lexus vehicles. I believe they also sell this thing as a Honda specific one. So you could go ahead and order a Honda one or you could just buy the software for $38 on here. Hey guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this quick video on going all the features for the 2IS. As you can see, this little launch tool is a very powerful tool, especially if you have this car or you have several versions of this car and you just want to do different diagnostics or even just simple things as turning off the DRLs. Just having this, and if you have some buddies that have it, you could just charge them like 20 bucks to turn off their DRLs, especially if they have HC motions, VLANs, or any aftermarket headlights where they don't want the high beam DRL anymore. So you get rid of all that flickering and everything when you change out your headlights. As I said earlier in the video, if you need the same exact scanner, go ahead and check out the links down in the description of Amazon. It's anywhere from $119 up to $140 depending on what kind of deals going on. Usually when I click on it on Amazon just to see if they have any in stock or what the price is, it's listed at like $160 or $169 with a $40 coupon off. Anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet to stay on top of all my different DIY videos, go ahead and turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video for all these different projects if I can do it you guys can do it I want to thank you for watching I'll talk to you guys next time